Please go ahead. It's feeling good. You know, I think uh, we're all excited about an opportunity to be able to move forward the right way. There's a lot of things, um, you know, that we can all do better, and, and we're interested in eyes forward and, and looking towards, uh, you know, a great challenge against a really good opponent that played excellent in week one. So physically you're expecting to be a full go? He's good, yeah. Sean, what's the latest on Van Jefferson's stuff? Uh, again, it's kind of similar to what it's been. Um, we're just taking it a week at a time with him. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, no matter how great of a player you are, whether you're a Jalen, uh, you know, a, an Aaron, uh, you know, a Matthew, all, all of our great players, Cooper, you know, there's going to be some instances where, hey, guys are, you know, I think what happened in that game was guys were trying to do right and pressing a little bit, and then some things ended up happening where we were a little bit more uncharacteristic in some of those plays. But um, my confidence in Jalen is unwavering. Um, he's a great competitor. Uh, one of my favorite things about it is is that he had great accountability and hey I got to be I can make some of these plays better can't try to be able to press a little bit they made some good plays but uh, have the utmost confidence and faith in Jalen and, and I know he's looking forward to being able to you know play his kind of game this week. I think the versatility, you know, I think Arthur did a great job. He and Dave are going, being able to mix it up, present multiple looks, get a lot of different guys involved, different ways of being able to run the football, presenting different personnel groups. And so um, you can see it. what I think is a great sign of a, a great coach is adjusting to the personnel and whatever those guys uh, do best with the players you're playing with. And I thought that really was illustrated throughout the preseason and in week one. And, and that's why it's going to be such a great challenge because they're using their players great. They're, they're using really everybody that they have up on the offensive side from an active roster perspective, and um, there's a lot of stuff to deal with. Chuck, can you expand on that for Marcus Mariota in particular, how they're using him different? Obviously, it's different than what they had a year ago. Yeah, I think when you talk about it, you know, he can certainly play quarterback from the pocket, be able to read and progress, but they're also taking advantage of his athleticism, whether that's him being activated as a runner, some of the RPOs, the boot game, some of the play actions. And so uh, his ability to be able to put pressure on you with some of the on schedule, but also off schedule, whether it's beating you with his arm or his legs. And, um, you know, he's a guy that uh, I thought he played really well last week. I thought he, you know, played really well throughout the preseason and, um, you know, a guy that I have tremendous respect for. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to say they're committing to the triple option at all, but, you know, when you see little flashes of the position-lit stuff like you always talk about, sure. what does that do to a defense, particularly in the middle of your defense and accounting for that? It just makes it the more things that you can present to a defense. You know, when you can get into, you know, 21 looks, but then you can present 11 looks or 12 personnel looks because of those joker type of pieces where – you know, I think Raheem said it best to the defense earlier. You know, you, when you look at Patterson, this guy's always been a great playmaker. Now he's become a, a damn good running back um, that can do all the things that made him a, a high pick as a receiver. And so he's dynamic. He's tough with the ball in his hands. He competes without the ball. And um, I think he's done a great job, and they've done a really good job of being able to develop him. In reviewing um, Stafford's performance in that game, the interception in particular, what, how do you evaluate that? You know, I think like like you've heard me say over and over, and it is the truth, Gary, you know, each play has its own separate story and they're all separate entities. And so, um, you know, a couple of them got away, a couple of them where we're not able to really see the coverage based on how the rush dispersed. But again, similar to kind of a lot of our players, you know, guys are trying to make a play and then it's really just playing within ourselves. I think a lot of it is, hey, let's make sure that we as coaches are doing a good job of trying to provide that clarity, put our guys in the right spots. But um, I think those are things that inevitably do occur uh, when you're playing that quarterback position. Some of those where you get a tip and a guy's making a great play, and then some of them where we just miss a little bit or sometimes we might not have seen based on how the rush dispersed, where are we throwing a ball to the flat. And um, that's where some of those tough things can occur. And we always learn from it, coaches and players alike. But uh, all three of those were a little bit different story. Yeah. Uh, is that something you speak with him one on one about, or is that handled just through you know the running backs coach? Or how? What would you guess? I would think you have a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, we always talk about communication. Here's my thing. Whether you know, and I think because I'm naturally such a positive guy, if I say anything that can be taken 
I don't want to say out of context, but can be taken in a direction where I'm challenging somebody. It's a result of my confidence in him and the expectations we have and what we need him to be, which isn't anything more than what he's capable of for us to reach, you know, some of the levels that I'm hopeful that we can do. And so um, I love Cam. I want him to be able to be a guy that we're heavily able to lean on, both he and Daryl. And that's what it's got to be able to be. And so, um, you know, I think that was pretty, pretty much what it is. But I'm always going to communicate with our guys. I've never been somebody that believes in messaging the team through the media. I was just kind of answering a question honestly and I think it got a little bit more play than, you know, maybe what I had anticipated. But bottom line is this. This is a guy I have a lot of confidence in. I know he's going to respond the right way. We've absolutely had conversations where it's because of the belief that I have why I'm pushing him. Where guys should be worried is if I'm not, you know, believing, you know, if I stop coaching or don't think you're capable of it, that's when I would, you know, be concerned about it. But he's a guy that uh, he's always responded the right way. He's a mentally tough kid, and uh, and he's going to make some plays for us. I do believe that. Outstanding. You know, Dave and I go back a long ways. Um, he's been a guy that, you know, really close friend, great human being. Obviously, he was a great player, too. You know, he's a baller at Louisville. And. Um, but he's got a great capacity for the game, you know, really knows all 22, great ability to be able to connect with his players. You know, I think whether it be the quarterback, he knows every position on the field, but his ability to connect, really build and develop relationships, communicate, you know, all the things that I think make a good coach. Dave does those things. Um, he's one of my good friends and uh, love Dave Ragone, love his kids and his, and his wife, Mario, and, uh, and they, uh, they mean a lot to me. I think, you know, being able to have, you know, some more intentionality about that, Maria, being able to, you know, call some plays where he's the primary, you know, whatever I say is going to be an excuse, but there wasn't good enough on my part in terms of the types of things that we were getting off to allow our players to be able to get into a rhythm. And you credit Buffalo. They did a great job. But, um, you know, I think it's just having a more specific approach to things that accentuate his skill set, similar to what I was answering earlier about what I think Arthur's done a great job with his players offensively. Um, you know, that's what I've got to do a better job of, and, and Allen is certainly somebody that needs to be more involved and get more opportunities. Obviously, based on, oh, I'm sorry. Obviously, based on the, what, the way you answered Terry's question, would assume that you and he have had a, a conversation about that, or how did he come into film this week? Oh, he's been great. You know, he always responds. And, you know, whether it's Cam, I mean, th these are the kind of conversations where you're challenging guys in a lot of instances to reach their highest potential. And we do it in a demanding but never a demeaning way. And that's that's something that I believe in. And so... Um, you know, I love the way that he's responded. I like the way that he went through the first walk through of the week. I liked his focus and concentration in the meetings and expect that to translate to practice and let's just take it a day at a time. But um, I have true confidence that he and Daryl are both going to do a very good job for us. And um, I'm excited about that coming to life this week. Sorry, I asked the question really poorly. In I know it's a different situation, but in terms of Allen, yep. maybe not Oh, he was amazing. I mean, he's such a special guy. I mean, you know, I think the first thing you do is you acknowledge like, hey, man, I appreciate your patience and your understanding. And this is where we've got to do a better job. And, you know, and I've got to do a better job. But he didn't have one. He, there was no flinch. There was no hesitation. I mean, I think he's the epitome of a pro's pro. But but I think for us to be the best version of ourselves as far as our offense is concerned, him only getting that one target, you know, or you can look at it as a couple, but it's really that one, you know, you got to get him more involved. So. Do you think because of, the, because of last week the team is maybe a little grumpy and anxious to get to this week's game? I think excited about the response, no doubt about it. You know, I, I think as a competitor, I mean, sometimes, you know, until you get, you know, punched in the face, you know, you really find out about people. And that's what I love is, is the opportunity to respond. That's what makes this game so great. Whether we had won it or whether we had lost it, you got to be able to move forward. And so um, sometimes those humbling experiences, as you guys have heard me say, Jim, they can be when you got the right people, they can be blessings in disguise. And, and that's the only way that I know how to look at it. And uh, we're going to worry about the things that we can control. And that's great effort and every single thing that we do to put ourselves in a position to play as good as we possibly can, make good decisions on Sunday. And, um, you know, and that's where we're at. And I, I think we got the right kind of guys to respond the way that we want. It is. Yeah, it's a good question, Greg. I, I think, um, you know, what I saw from him throughout training camp was really encouraging. 
saw position flex versatility. I see a guy that it's important enough to him where you've seen that improvement occur over those last few years, as you mentioned. I thought he played really well in the preseason. You know, you got some real tangible game evidence, not exclusive to just when we're practicing against the Bengals or practicing against one another. He played outstanding at guard and in the tackle position in the preseason. I think he's earned the right. And, you know, I don't think I, I have true confidence in him, but you don't ever really know until they get out there. But uh, based on, you know, this guy's body of work, his demeanor, his disposition, the way that he handles himself, um, by no means do I think it's going to be anything but a great opportunity and that he's going to maximize and capitalize on. Okay? Thanks, guys. Uh, I think we kind of, you know, eager to get back out there. Um, obviously, the first game um, didn't go the way that we wanted. And, you know, I think a lot of the stuff that 
um, you know, they did was good, but a lot of stuff we we could have cleaned up and, and did a lot better. So, um, you know, we decided to get out there, have an opportunity to, you know, kind of show why we feel very confident about this team. Um, I think we just um, play stickier coverage. Um, I think we just got to, you know, do our job. And some of them, you know, you just got to make plays. And I think um, that's really all it is, you know. Um, a lot of it was getting into those third and short, you know, so, you know, doing a better job on first, second down to get us out of those ranges. But, um, you know, it really just comes down to, to players making plays, and, and we will. Um, you know, they run an interesting um, style of offense. They have, uh, you know, pretty much every running style in each of their personnel. So, you know, you got to be conscious of the personnel because you got, you know, receivers that, you know, do really, really well at running back. You know, you got guys moving all across the board. So I think, um, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, paying attention to that read option, the RPOs, the things of that nature that they're going to bring, um, you know, everybody being conscious and focused of that because, um, you know, if you pay too much attention to the run, that's when they throw the ball and too much attention to the pass is when, you know, the run sneaks into you. So, you know, just got to be locked in on your job. Make sure you take care of your assignment each and every play. Um, this is going to be a game that we got to be really disciplined. Bobby saw um, some photos of the pad you wore during the game with Kobe. Mm-hmm. Can you explain what the motivation was for that and why you did that? Um, you know, he's somebody that, has inspired me, you know, I think he was one of the first players that I've watched from start to finish. Um, and so he was somebody that um, I looked up to growing up. Um, you know, obviously his untimely death, you know, hit the world. And, you know, I felt like with me coming back to L.A., I think it was just uh, a way to honor somebody that's done a lot of my life that he probably didn't even know. Did you read, uh, I did. Uh, I think I read it. Like I, I read a little bit of it. I didn't get through it, um, but definitely when he passed, I read it. Um, and then you know, a lot of his children books and you know the wizard trees and all that stuff. So, did you ever get a chance to meet him before he passed? I actually did. I got a chance to uh, meet him thanks to my good friend Sherm. Um, so we were, we got a chance to have a conversation, which was a pretty surreal moment for me. Um, well, the context of the conversation was kind of centered around business. And so um, uh, I've heard a lot of stories about how how he is on the, uh, the court was exactly how he was in the, um, you know, in the meeting rooms and stuff like that. And so when we were sitting there, like he was really on every single detail when it came to business. And, you know, I just was really impressed that, you know, somebody that, spent so many years into one profession, was able to transition and be, um, you know, kind of equally feared in the business world because of how smart and um, how in tune he was. So uh, it's definitely somebody that I was like, man, I want to aspire to be like that. Did, uh, did you watch, being off Monday, did you uh, watch the Seattle uh, Monday night game? Of course. And <laughs> <laughs> I think me and 19 million other people. <laughs> Were you um, surprised at all by uh, the reception that, Um, I think at the end of the day, like fans understand that this is, you know, you have your moment and then they move on. So, you know, I think they viewed him as like a opposing quarterback. And so, um, you know, the reception that he got was, was, you know, what any quarterback that's an opposing quarterback would get. So that's kind of how I looked at it. as far as like my reception. I'm not sure. Um, you know, that's not until what December, end of December. So, you know, they could be feeling a different type of way about it. A game that you hear all the time about players and, and friendships and guys love talking to each other through games and kind of breaking down what's happening and all of that. What are, with a, an ending like that, as sort of uh, dramatic as it was and field goal attempt and the fourth and five and all that, what was, if you're able to share, what was sort of the reaction um, that you may or may not have had among your friends or play, even players here? I think it's just kind of like everybody 
in my opinion, everybody, the whole world had the same reaction. I think um, um, they didn't expect the game to go that way. Um, and I think, you know, everybody kind of expected, you know, you have a guy like Russell to have the ball in his hand towards the, the end of the game and, and give him an opportunity to make a play. So um, when it didn't happen, you were kind of just like wondering why. But at the end of the day, I mean, I thought about it for a couple seconds. And remember, I'm a Ram, and it doesn't affect me. So, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I mean, they're pretty tall, but we, you know, we do push-ups, so <laughs> I think that's, you know, maybe combat it that way. How would you evaluate your own, you know, individual performance in that first game within the context of the defense? Um, obviously, I think, um, you know, I could have did better. I think we could have done better collectively. So, I mean, I think it's the first game. It's one that I don't think anybody um, was extremely pleased with how they performed, especially we didn't get a win. And so, um, you know, just like everybody, I'm excited to get back out there and, and um, you know, make the adjustments that I feel we, we will make and, you know, have a better outing. Bobby, because a lot of the starters don't play in the preseason, do you think it takes a couple of games to get everybody sort of going? Uh, what's your feeling? Um, I mean, I think it just kind of depends, to be honest. I think, um, you know, sometimes those games are needed, and it's like a catch 22. I feel like if you have – players out there and somebody gets hurt, everybody's like, oh, they shouldn't be out there. And if, like, they have a bad game the first game, then it's like, oh, they should be out there. So you really can't win. You know, if we're out there and, you know, something happens, unfortunately, then um, people tend to be like, oh, like, why are you playing players in a game that doesn't mean anything? And then when there's a little bit of rust or whatever in the first game, then you're like, oh, well, maybe you could have knocked that out in the preseason. So, I mean, I think – Everything hindsight is twenty twenty. I don't think this would be a conversation if we came out and and had a uh, we played a great game. Um, nobody would be talking about it. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're professionals. Um, the game didn't go the way that you know we wanted it to go. And so, as professionals, we look at that game and we move on. And really, you know, the testament of a team is how you respond. So, I plan on us responding. Um, kind of to an extent, like I said, they, they, they normally when a team gets to like 22 personnel, 13 personnel, like bigger bodies, you're thinking like, you know, run game, but they come up in 22 personnel and then give you 11 personnel look. And so, you know, you kind of can't really pay attention to the personnel. So that, that normally that's what you watch during the, you know, the course of a week, you look at the different personnel and you see how they, they use them. Um, so really, you know, you're kind of looking at the personnel and see what formations they like to get into those. And so that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Um, I don't think it's necessarily going to change because if it's a 22 personnel look with 11 or 22 personnel, but 11 personnel look, I'm going to pretty much be in the same um, area that I would normally be in. So um, it kind of just depends on the formation. It depends on the route or run fit. Um, you definitely have to be very conscious, um, you know, of the personnel because you have you have um, you know a guy that's a receiver that can be a running back. So you got to see what are they using him in this formation. Is he a receiver or is he a running back? Then you have also have a guy who's really good at tight end but can be a receiver. And so you got to see are they using him as a tight end or are they using him as a receiver? So those are the kind of like the quick things that you have to um, pay attention to and, and um, you know figure out. Uh, you know how they're using it, but it, again, it goes back to you know what's the final formation and and make it read off that. All set. Cool. Appreciate it. Thank you.